Hey everyone, I hope you're doing awesome. A little while ago, I posted a video of me demonstrating a servo hooked directly to an Arduino, and I cautioned folks to be careful when doing this. I do have a part two of that video, but when I went to post it, the thought dawned on me that some folks may not really know what a servo even is, even though it's quite common to use servos with Arduino. So, let's talk about what a servo is, how they work, and a little bit on controlling them. Since the early 90s, which some think is like way back in the dark ages, the servo motor has been finding its way into robotics projects more and more often. They're small, light, relatively cheap, and easy to use. And most of them sport a design that makes mounting a snap. Let's dive into some detail on how servo motors work. But first, let's get some nomenclature out of the way. So what does the word servo mean to begin with? Well, servo is short for servo mechanism. So you could say that a servo motor is actually a servo mechanism motor. And a servo mechanism is a special type of automatic control system which controls the motion or position of an object. Servo mechanisms have four important characteristics. They have an input command, feedback, power amplification, and an output that turns or positions an object. The device control could be the rudder of a cruise ship, a missile, or your robot. So, now we have a basic idea of what the word servo means. The thing is, most of us won't be building missiles, hopefully, and large boats. However, some of us will build robots. And because of this, though there are different types of servo mechanisms or servos, we're going to focus on the type that electronics and robot enthusiasts will actually be using. And these are the hobby or RC servos. So let's talk about servo motors versus continuous rotation DC motors. A servo motor is a special subset of a continuous DC motor. But hobby servos come in a neat rectangular box with other goodies inside, while a DC motor is just, well, a DC motor. A typical DC motor has two leads, and if we apply power, the motor will simply spin in one direction. If we want to reverse the motor, we just swap the two leads. No big deal. If we need to see how far the shaft has turned, or how many rotations the motor shaft has completed, we'll need to find some way to measure that. A servo motor, however, has three leads. One's for power, the other's for ground, and the third is a control lead. Since the servo is a closed feedback system, unlike the regular DC motor, which is open loop, the control lead is needed to sense the position of the servo shaft and adjust it if necessary. We'll see how this works in a minute. Let's talk about what's inside a servo motor. So inside a typical servo dwells a DC motor plus some other components. Now, not all of them are exactly the same, but they all have at least three main parts. The DC motor, reduction gears, and some sort of control circuitry. And here we can see the inside of a typical servo. Let's talk about the three main parts in a little bit more detail. The DC motor is just, well, a DC motor that can change directions. It's the silver thing in the picture. Not a whole lot to say about that. The reduction gears reduce the high speed of the DC motor to something usable for fine control. We'll talk more about the materials used to make the gears a bit later. Because of the gears, many revolutions of the motor equal one revolution of the servo's shaft. The black thing with holes in it on the outside of the case is the servo's horn. Horns are used to connect rods and other things to the servo. They come in many different sizes and shapes. The output gear of the servo connects to a potentiometer, which is a brown object in the picture, which is just a variable resistor. The pot's position, and pot is short for potentiometer, by the way, indicates the position of the servo motor's shaft. There's also a small board with some circuitry on it that reads the potentiometer and controls the servo. We'll talk more about the circuit in a bit. So here's a schematic representation, well, kind of, of the inside of a typical servo. You may be asking, well, okay, how do we control a servo motor since it has these three leads? You can't just connect a battery to a servo motor and watch it go. And this is because servos need special control signals to operate correctly. The good thing is there are plenty of ways to easily do this with Arduino or even simple electronic circuits. Now, servos are usually powered by 4.8 to 7.2 volts, though 4.8 to 6 is more common. And let's talk about the connector for a minute. Now, lucky for us, there are standards which govern the design of servos, and the connector is one of the parts subject to the standards. And servo motors sport three primary connector types. 
their type J, S, and A. And this pretty picture here shows the different styles and maps the wire's color to its function. Now, as we can see, different manufacturers use different colors for different functions. Consequently, it's very important that you observe these different signals from different manufacturers, as connecting them wrong will damage the motor. Now, finally, servo connectors mate with standard 0.025 inch square pins on 0.1 inch centers. Now, let's talk a little bit about servo motor control signaling. The signal that makes the motor move is in the form of a stream of electrical pulses. Although this scheme is similar to pulse width modulation, or PWM, it is a bit different, but many people refer to it as PWM, and maybe I'll do a tutorial on pulse width modulation or PWM sometime soon. Now, the exact length or duration of the pulses is what determines the position of the servo. It's not the number of pulses per second that controls it, but the duration of the pulses, and this is important. PWM depends on duty cycle, which is just on time versus off time of the digital pulses. But servers don't care about duty cycle. They care about the duration of the pulses. And this is what makes servos control slightly different from PWM. Because of this, it may be more accurate to call servo control pulse duration modulation, or PDM. But anyway, the duration of the pulses are usually 1 or 2 milliseconds. A 1.5 millisecond pulse will make the servo return to its midpoint. A 1 millisecond pulse will make it turn all the way in one direction, while a 2 millisecond pulse will make it turn all the way in the opposite direction. The range of motion of a typical servo is from 0 to about 180 degrees. And it is possible to modify a servo for continuous rotation. But this is an introductory lesson, so we'll talk about that in the future. So for clarification, take a look at this. Usually, a servo motor needs about 50 of these pulses per second, though the number can vary. And this is known as the servo's refresh rate or frame rate. If this rate's too low, the accuracy in holding torque reduces. If it's too high, the servo might jitter or not work properly. The actual length of the pulses to position the servo full right or full left varies by the manufacturer, and even varies by different models among the same manufacturer. So we use caution when trying shorter or longer pulses than 1 or 2 milliseconds. When pushed beyond its mechanical limit, the shaft hits an internal stop or nub inside of the case. As a result, this could damage the gears or the pot. If the servo starts clicking, this is a sign that the gears are binding. 